Welcome to The Driven Entrepreneur, where we sit down with visionaries, trailblazers, and entrepreneurs and discover why and how they do what they do. We'll get the backstory, plus plenty of life and business lessons along the way. Here's your host, Matt Browning. Welcome back to The Driven Entrepreneur. This is Matt Browning. Your host, and if this is your first time to the show, man, I'm so glad you're here. Um, I'm guessing you either are a driven entrepreneur yourself, or you're an entrepreneur who wants to be more driven, wants to accomplish more, wants to to share more with the world, wants to impact more. Or maybe the third category that we get a lot is people who are wanting to start a business, and you're you know you're dipping your toe in the water, you're exploring these options. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm glad to have each and every one of you here with us on the radio show. Um, this show, you might be listening to it on your dial. It's on 16 AM FM stations across America, coast to coast. You can also find every episode on demand wherever you get podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, uh, Google, Apple, all that great stuff. And they're all there, no paywall. So I invite you to go back and check those out. But why would you check them out? Well, here's what we're going to do. Because... It's a perfect time. I feel like this is an interesting time. It's uh, it's back to school season for us, for uh, my wife and I and my son starting school next week. Um, real, real excited about that. But as we're getting back to school, I'm starting to look at, um, you know, really what we're doing with our, our everyday life and our week and our schedules. We've had a crazy summer, finally traveling a bit again. Um, family came in town. We've just been kind of going, going. And as I'm taking a breath, I'm also taking stock of my surroundings and taking stock of uh, my business and businesses because I have a business with a partner. I have a solo uh, business as well with employees. And I'm just kind of looking at everything I'm doing, Um, looking at the virtual workspace, looking at consulting as well with different clients and future opportunity. Um, And I'm looking at, at, at spiritual. I'm looking at emotional. I'm looking at family life. And I'm looking at business. And really, maybe you're doing the same thing. Have you in the last 18 months taken stock of, you know, what you want for your future? Um, I've been really thinking a lot about the question of vision, the question of purpose, and and even more uh, granular than, you know, this big purpose and vision. Also, it's like the execution of does the vehicle today and into my future look the same as the vehicle that I've been riding for the last several years. And I don't know if that uh, resonates with you or not, but I want to kind of have a conversation about that. And one of the many things that's coming out of this this, uh, thought-provoking time for myself uh, and my family, and hopefully you're doing uh, something similar, is I'm also looking at revisiting uh, how I'm spending a lot of my time. Now, when I think about the podcast and this radio show, I love it. I love you. I love the listener. Um, I love, but the thing I love the most, honestly, is the the coaching, the teaching, the sharing advice, answering questions. Can you know really getting in and amongst the people? Um, for years, you might know my business has been speaking, training, live events, seminars, coaching, consulting, and uh, authoring. As I've been in that world, um, you know coming out kind of post pandemic, starting to plan our first live events in, in, you know, over a year and a half, it's really striking me that it's like, man, I miss the thing I loved in my business the most is being around the people and getting questions and answering questions and helping people and coaching them along. And I've done that virtually on zoom for a handful of private clients and and some of the mastermind groups that we run. Uh, But I haven't really been doing it in the podcast. In the last while, we've been doing strictly interview only, and I love those, and I get a lot of great feedback about it. I hope you've been enjoying that. Um, I love interviews because we can interview people that are experts in an area in business that I am not. And what's great is when we get those people on, it's like you can really glean a lot. But I've also gotten some feedback that's like, Matt, we haven't heard a lot from you lately. And, you know, I've had some people emailing asking, hey, you know, can we hear from you more? I want to ask. And there, people are sending me DMs on Instagram. You can do that at Matt Browning, by the way. It's B-R-A-U-N-I-N-G. Browning. Browning. 
Braunin. I'm not sure how the, the right way to pronounce that. I'm 41 years old, still trying to figure out my last name. But it's B-R-A-U-N-I-N-G. So you hit me at Matt Braunin. And, you know, people ask me questions on Instagram. And you can send an email as well if you have a question about business. And I'll tell you more about that, that at the end of the episode. You can send a question uh, to Matt Braunin Podcast at a gmail.com and i'm taking questions for this next season here in fact what we're going to do is we're going to rest the uh the interview style for a little while and we're going to bring back something i haven't done in a long time i call it mondays with matt Woo! mondays with matt and this is just kind of a quick introduction and then we're going to get right into what that looks like um but for a long time i actually did this uh, this show twice a week every single week and mondays with matt or we've done teaching Tuesdays where I would answer questions and teach on something, and then Friday would be an interview. Well, for a little while, because I'm going to take a rest, and I'm going to take a rest of my interview schedule and everything else for a few months here, we're going to jump into Mondays with Matt, and every Monday you're going to have a new podcast episode coming out where I answer your questions. And here's the best thing. If you have a question about entrepreneurship, about business, and look, this can be in startup. It can be in marketing, sales, accounting, leadership, uh, pricing and structure, uh, prospecting, speaking, whatever it is, there's things that I'm pretty good at. And, of course, there are elements that I'm not great at. And what I'll do is I'll save those questions if I cannot answer it to the best of my ability. I'm going to save that question and I'll ask it when I have an expert on that I'm interviewing down the road. And here's why you want to do this. Not just to get your question answered for free and have fun with it, but I'm going to, of course, plug you. All right? I love doing that. So I'm going to plug you, your business, your business name, your website, like whatever you want to get, right? Like I'm, I'm going to reframe that your, our question today comes from you and do a little plug on national radio and all across uh, the top podcasts in the entrepreneur category for you and your business. So if you take the time to email me, Matt Browning Podcast. Again, that's M A T T B R A U N I N G Podcast. You know how to spell that. But if you email me at Matt Browning Podcast at gmail.com or hit me on Instagram uh, or Facebook at Matt Browning, uh, I will get the message. Put in the subject line, question. If you just question in the subject line on an email, I'll know it's a question for the podcast and then I'm going to go check it out. Uh, so, Today's episode, I'm going to answer a few, uh, some of the most commonly asked questions um, that I've gotten uh, over the last year or so when I meet someone at a, or not the last year, years, when I meet someone at a seminar, I meet someone young when I'm doing a speaking engagement. Usually I get a few of these kind of things and I just, you know, put a few together and I'm going to answer those right now. All right, let's answer a few fun questions. Question number one, Matt, how many hours a day do you work on average? I read Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Work Week. Great book, by the way. Um, it's all about outsourcing and the power of leveraging outsourcing, so you can start working less. That's an interesting concept. And then you have other people who, you know, uh, uh, Vince McMahon from WWE, the chairman of a billion dollar company, who's known to work eighty hours plus, oftentimes, and you know he's into his late seventies now. So, what's the right number of hours to work? So, I'll answer the question a couple different ways. One is when for me. I actually did this recently, and I'm looking looking at my whole calendar, and I realize I think I might be working too little. And here's what I mean. I probably work three to four days a week. I usually take a full day off to be with my son and have a special day. I sometimes take a couple days off or if we're traveling or vacationing. So I work three to four days a week on average. And those days typically aren't more than about five, six hours a day, depending. I mean, I got marathon days, you know, if I'm doing podcasts and sometimes I have back-to-back interviews and then, um, you know, multiple uh, training sessions. So I have days when I work 10, 12 hours, but then I might be off the next day completely or work one hour, you know. So I think my average realistically is about 15 to 20 hours a week. Now, what does that mean? I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing. You need to answer the question, how much do you actually want to work? What's the purpose of my business? See, if the purpose of your business is you want to own a business, but you don't want to work in it, you're going to run into a problem. So my advice, my take is, if you're starting a business especially, are you willing to work? And you better be willing to work. Now look, if you work a full-time job and you're trying to start a side hustle into a business, that's a different story. So you might only carve out five, 10, 15 hours a week to work on this side business on a Wednesday night and a Saturday all day or something. What you want to do if you're carving out side time, you know, for the hours a week to work, make sure that you actually block the time. 
You know, that's the number one thing that has saved my bacon. The reason I can be, I think I'm pretty efficient with the hours I work is that I schedule the time in, right? And it's like, okay, Tuesday, I'm in the office and I'm going to do creative work. Or Wednesday, I'll do sometimes coaching, I'll do group sessions, and then I'll record, you know, interviews back to back. And I'll, I'll get all that kind of recording time and FaceTime all in one shot, right? All while I'm in the same mood. So um, some call it stacking behaviors uh, or, you know, segmenting your time, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I think that's really important. And again, if you're, if you're only going to work seven hours a week because that's what you have available right now, it's like, that's cool, man. Go do it. Um, but schedule it, right? Schedule that, you know, what? on Saturday, I'll work five hours and that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to work Tuesday night from six to eight and, but then shut it off, right? Don't, Try to work as much as you can, and then you end up trying to work till 1130 midnight, and then you get burned out, and then you're not good at your job the next day, and then you're always feeling guilty because you should work more, but you can't fit it in. And so if you want to avoid all that, and I've had many clients over the years that have had some kind of experience with this, some kind of challenge uh, with getting burned out or, or you know stressing out because you don't, you're not working enough or you're working too much, um, decide how many hours you want to work. And then schedule those days, times, and try to put them into as few days as possible, right? So again, it, to me, you might work different. But for me, if I'm going to work 10 hours on a side hustle, I'm going to be a lot more efficient if I carve, like, again, six hours on a Saturday and then four hours on a Tuesday night or Tuesday afternoon or whatever it is. That's like two days out of my life that I just focus on the business, and here's the thing, if you're only doing 5, 10 hours, you can only focus on so many aspects of getting your business going and, and, and so forth. And I'm talking, I guess, if you're a solopreneur, you know, if you have a whole team, that's a different aspect. And I've been in seasons where I'm all about trying to scale and leverage my time. And what that means is I had to ask different questions. You know, I had to start asking, um, how much time do I need to spend managing and leading the team so they feel inspired and they know I'm a part of this and they know what to do and they have the resources and then they can go to town and do the work. And I found that typically it's a lot more than I expected. You know, I mean, at least three days a week. You can't, you can't be absent all the time and just hope people are going. The morale goes down through the floor real fast. Uh, so, you know, that would be something more like, hey, at least come in the office or have a meeting, you know, a Monday morning Zoom with whoever, your outsourcers, your insourcers, your employees, whoever is on your team, have that meeting, go over some things, set some vision and intentions, minimum one big team meeting a week, uh, and then have some catch up throughout the week, maybe a few individual sessions, calls, or uh, in-person meetings if possible uh, throughout the week. And then you probably have a little bit of work that you do yourself if you're also the talent. So, all right, we can go off on that for a while, but we're going to stop there. That's how many hours I work uh, on average a week. Next question someone asks is, how has being an entrepreneur affected your family life? It's a really good question. And, you know, I, I think I'll take a second on that. You know, generally, it's been very positive, very, very positive, um, primarily due to my flexible schedule. So being an entrepreneur means that I, I don't... And I want to be careful about this. We just talked about hours, right? Having a flexible schedule and deciding not to work are two different things. So having a flexible schedule means I create my own schedule. Um, it doesn't mean that I let my schedule be created for me by the demands that the world puts on me. And I'll be really clear about that. So for instance, I, I've, I've said a few times, uh, Wednesday is a day that I do group sessions. I do. I run a mastermind one Wednesday. I run a group coaching session and I'll, I'll schedule podcast interviews. And ideally, if I'm going to go on someone else's show or do a guest speaking opportunity, I'm going to do that the same day. And it's like, it's, I don't know, it seems silly, but it's a day that I know I'm going to get up early and, and have my brain switched on. Um, I know I'm going to shower early. Look, working from home and being an entrepreneur, oftentimes I might not hop in the shower until later that day. Don't tell anyone, but I might even skip a day. You know, have you ever done that? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going out. I'm not going to see anyone. But if I know I'm going to be on Zoom, I know I'm going to be on camera, I know I'm going to get on stage if it's live, whatever, um, I'll pick that day where I can go. And then it's like my wife knows that she, she'll she have our son and she's taking care of the home and she's basically like she's on her own and she can make her own plan, right? And I'm off doing the work um, and we got our things going on. My son knows that I'm at work and I think that's actually a good thing, right? It's good that he knows that dad heads off to work and actually works at something and and has a purpose and so forth. Maybe we'll do a, a future episode about 
uh, about kids and being an example and, you know, again, what that looks like. But then I'll, I'll have a Monday that typically Monday I take off completely from work. And I might, again, I might have a text here and there, a phone call if I need to, you know, very rare. But I try to really push those into I'll schedule a busy day to show up. And then I'll schedule like coaching and sales sessions and all that kind of thing on a Friday and on Tuesdays. But Monday, I'm going to be hanging out and give my wife a break and I'll be home with, with our son Val. And it's like, what are we going to do? And when again, during the summer, especially when he's not in school, that means I'm going to schedule, hey, let's go to the pool together. Or let's, you know, let's go explore something. You know, maybe we go fishing. Maybe we play video games for a, a bunch. Whatever it is, how it's affected my family life is the flexibility has allowed me to do more with them, to be more involved. Um, again, my wife works full-time in the home. I work full-time in the business. And being that that's our situation, the beauty is having my business has allowed me to not be absent from the house, right? Um, like I do all the dishes at home, all of them. I do the dishes. And it's not just at the end of every night later on. I can uh, I, I, I can wake up and, you know, sometimes we have some fun family time in the morning. So, so it's not always like dinner and homework and short family time and then off to bed and I only saw my, my kid for, you know, 45 minutes and I see my wife for an hour and a half. No, it's not like that. We get time in the afternoon. Sometimes we get time in the evening. Sometimes the evenings are shot and it's like the, I'm, everyone's tired and this isn't when we're at our best. So my wife and I can go have a date day. You know, we can have a date day at noon and he's in school and like life's good. So the flexibility is the biggest thing. Um, the negative side, I would say, is probably when my travel schedule was getting too busy. Uh, we moved across the country a few years back from California to Michigan, uh, Grand Rapids, a little shout out. And when we moved, there were still a lot of speaking gigs and a lot of events I had to do. And I loved doing them. But it did get stressful and hard because now I was flying across the country. It's a whole day of travel. And then I'd speak at a speaking gig, let's say, for an hour. And then I had another one booked like two days later. Now, normally, I could have just driven to L.A., spoke, came home, been home for two days, just normal, right? And then drive to San Diego and then come back. These are all drive, you know, an hour, hour and a half away. But in this case, I had to fly for a day, speak. And then stay around there in a hotel because I was going to speak two, three days later. And I don't want to be just, you know, on the plane all the time. So it meant that I was gone for like a week or a week and a half in some cases if, I, if I've done my own events. And, you know, it can get busy. You know, be careful what you ask for, I often say. Be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. And, you know, a long time ago I asked to have a successful business where I impacted thousands of people and made a lot of money and in the process and got to live my purpose. And well, I did it and I started traveling around and doing a lot of events and a lot of speaking and, and it was fabulous, but there is the potential for burnout when you start getting it. So just, you know, be careful that for me, I try to look at my family, you know, it's like, what are your priorities? Well, my family is more important than my business, but there are times when my business necessities take a time frame priority. Like, my family's most important, but on a Tuesday, because there's this urgent client that's a high, you know, uh, revenue client or whatever, I might have to stop what I'm doing. I might have to break that Monday rule of being with my son and go answer a question because business took a priority in the moment, right? So sometimes there's timed things, but generally I understand that my family is more important than my business. And that means when I make decisions and there's opportunities that come along, you know, I don't say yes to every opportunity. I don't think you should either. If I said yes to every opportunity, then, oh man, if I said yes to every opportunity, some of them would increase business, but hurt my family life or hurt us long term. So I'm not willing to take those opportunities. So I say no to a lot of things and I've learned to say no. And I say yes to the right things, right? It's like, okay, is this going to help my family? Is this going to help my business? Is this going to be fun to do? Is this going to be in my talent sphere of what I'm actually good at? And if I can say yes to all those things, it's like, yeah, let's go. Let's do this. So that is uh, probably the biggest thing of how being an entrepreneur has affected my family. And then the last question I'm going to answer for this first inaugural episode, and then we're going to sign off. And I'm going to see you next Monday with a Monday with Matt. And remember, you can answer, ask your questions. Um, the last question that I get uh, fairly often is, how do you generate new ideas? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, how do you generate new ideas? Where do I want to start with that? 
I, I think there's different types of people and different different minds and personalities as well. Some people, you suffer like me from chronic ideaitis, and you have too many ideas. Others, maybe you're racking your head trying to figure it out. So let me first just talk to the, the person like me. My problem is not generating ideas. My problem is saying no to all the ideas that are great ideas but are not the right idea or not the idea that's right right now. So ask a couple questions, right? Just because, you know, I, I got a great idea. I went off at the beginning of the year. I did a fast for 48 hours, went off to a hotel by myself and just juice fasted and prayed and wrote and I played Legos, uh, no social media, you know, no news, nothing like that. I don't watch news anyway, but, um, you know, primarily you get the idea. I just went away to just be and to seek vision for the year. And I'm asking God, you know, how have you made me to be? What does this year look like? Um, what's the vision for me, for my family, for the business? What do you want me to do? And I started getting some interesting ideas. And I had one idea come out that was easily, and I'm not exaggerating to, you know, for effect, but easily a, a, a million dollar, you know, seven figure revenue branch for the business. It would be an additional seven figures. And it was a great idea. It still is. Like, I would love to do it. It's exciting. It's in my wheelhouse. But as I, as I started looking into it, what I realized is to do this effectively, it would cause me to put on more of a different kind of event and be on the road doing some traveling in addition to the existing traveling and events that were already being promised and what I would do. And as easy as it would be and as fun as it would be and as, as um, lucrative as it would be, it wasn't an idea for right now. Now, maybe in the future, the timing will be right to do that idea. But I had to bury it, or at least I, I, I set it on a shelf. And I, I'm, I'm, it's not like, oh, I need to figure out how to do it. No, I'm not doing it. And I decided not to. And then I kept praying and I kept just being there. And then mm, a second idea came. And the second idea, I think, was really smart, and it's going to make less revenue, but it'll still be significant. It'll be a six-month project, and I actually launched that in June. And maybe I'll talk about that uh, in a future episode if it makes sense. Uh, we're doing a new book project, and that's a really exciting uh, concept, and we have some cool people involved in the project. And, you know, it's, it's just like it, it's a different idea. So for me, the biggest way to generate ideas if, you, if you're stumped is change your environment, get out of your house, you know, especially if your house isn't an aspiring place to be. And I get it. Like, you know, there's, if you're entrepreneuring from the basement, like, and actually that's what I've been doing during the pandemic. You know, I was in our upstairs office space, but then we moved that. I actually um, wanted to bless my wife and give her some extra space to do some art and her own creativity and writing. And there's, you know, it's sun up there and it's a nice place to be. So she's taken the upstairs place. And I thought, you know, I have an office downtown um, in connection with our church, so I can come in here and record, and I have a co-work space connected to our gym. So, you know, I'll do sessions down to the basement, and I move my desk down to the basement. I'll tell you what, man, ever since I moved down to the basement, it's just not inspiring. We don't have one of those cool basements. We have one of those, like, like not cool basements that I wish was different, and I don't really have the energy to do it right now. So I got this desk and my computer down there, and it's just, you know, it, it feels like... Uh, <laughs> it feels like I'm, I'm in one of those, like, I, I, I got taken away by the other troops and they're going to like torture me. And I have the light shining on me for light. And there's like an exposed brick wall and people are going to interrogate me and ask me questions. I'm not a big fan of the space is my point. So it's not inspiring. And shockingly, guess what? I don't come up with new ideas there. I don't get creative there. I go down there, you know, sometimes to get away from the noise and, and to, to write an email or to do a quick, you know, if I have a client session, it's like, I don't want to, you know, get dressed up and, and get ready for the day and then, you know, drive 20 minutes to the office just to show up for one 30 minute call. Right. So I'm just going to go to the basement and do the call or do the zoom. And then I'll go about my day and go make lunch. Um, but what I found is I need somewhere else that's a little more inspiring. So that can be going to the lake. It can be going to the park. Um, it can be walking around. And if you have woods somewhere that you enjoy, uh, it could be a, a downtown urban spot. If you can find somewhere with some art, something inspiring, um, you know, maybe join a co work space. You know, and again, I, I found, you know, I have, I have a gym that I love here that um, I'm already a member of. And they have a building next to it with a whole co work space on the second floor. And, 
it's great, you know, so I can go there and actually start thinking the things and writing. And I, I like to be around people that way. So um, to generate new ideas, find an aspiring space, change your environment if you're having trouble with that. And the, other, the last thing I'll say on this is something also is if you have too much on your to do list, you know, like you got all these things to do, all these what I call open loops. You have that email to reply to and you have that that graphic to look at and you have this other thing to approve and then you got to figure out some banking and you got, you know, whatever it is, right? You got, you're an entrepreneur, so you have all these different types of tasks. If your task list gets too long, it's really challenging to creatively come up with a new idea or, you know, you, you need to write a creative social media post maybe or an email for your newsletter. It's real hard to get creative on those things when you have all of these non-creative tasks over your head. So what I like to do is just write out a few things and do what Brian Tracy dubbed um, eat that frog. You know, I think, swallow that frog? Eat that frog. I think it's eat that frog. Um, you can email me at uh, mattbroningpodcast at gmail.com if I got that wrong, but that's off the top of my head. Uh, but it was Brian Tracy. And he's talking about if you have a big group task to do, eat the frog first. So do the smelliest, grossest, most annoying, I'm not looking forward to it at all task. Get that done first because everything else is easy and you can gain some momentum. Um, so if you have those tasks, get a couple of those done and washed off your plate. And then take a stretch around, change your environment, breathe, and then start asking the creative questions. And guess what? You might just get it. All right. So those are some questions for today from Monday with Matt. I hope you enjoyed that. And it's just I don't know, awesome to connect with you. And I'm again, part of the reason I want to do this is I personally want to change things up. I love my interviews, but I've been doing so many interviews in the last three years. I'm taking a break from interviews uh, probably until the fall, maybe even Christmas. We'll see where we go. And I'd like to talk directly with you, and I want this show to be more even like for you, by you, with you. So again, send me a DM at Matt Browning, Instagram or Facebook, whatever's easier, whatever you're on more. Um, not on TikTok, sorry, not yet, but Facebook and Instagram. Um, or email me directly, Podcast at gmail.com. We'll put that in the show notes as well. And in the subject line, put question and ask me your question, anything at all about entrepreneurship. You can ask me about my life. You can ask me about a struggle you're in, a challenge you're having, um, whatever it is. It can be about, again, finance, business, sales, uh, coaching. It can also be on productivity, time management, personal life. I've been doing personal development work for 15, 16 years. I'm pretty darn good at that. That's where I built my my second major business it's all around neuro-linguistic programming and personal development. So ask away. I'll be ready for you next week. And uh, I was going to say with another driven entrepreneur, but guess what? We're going to be back next week with you. One of you is going to be the featured driven entrepreneur with a plug for your business and the question answered. All right, stay out there and stay driven. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.